A very pleasant good evening to everyone. I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in him shall never die. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth on him should not perish, but have eternal life. Now I realize that this time of parting can be very difficult. But let us take a moment to be thankful and grateful for the life of our dearly departed, remembering the impact they had made on your life. You may remember significant moments with them or fun times you had. You may even remember the times you laughed or cried or their personality throughout this life. We are gathered here today to find comfort in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and especially to surround those grieving with our love, our faith, and our prayers. At this time, I'm going to be turning you over to the hands of our moderator for this evening, Ms. Trisley Shuffler. Good afternoon. Good, afternoon. Good afternoon. A special welcome to our family and our friends who have gathered here with us today, and also to those who couldn't be with us but who have the privilege of joining us online. We come to bid farewell, yes, but also to give God thanks for the life of our cousin, sister, aunt and friend Esther Duncan. At this time I'll ask Pastor Kenroy Marshall to come and to give the invocation. Shall we bow our heads? Heavenly Father, we want to say thank you. We want to say thank you. We want to say thank you for your goodness, for your mercies, and for your grace. Father, we also want to say a special thank you today for the life and the witness of our dear sister, Duncan. God, indeed, she has served. Serve well serve faithfully and God I am indeed a witness of this service as well and father this evening we just want to praise you for all of the labors God we are aware this evening that you've said us to us in your word that our labor shall not be in vain in the Lord and this evening God as we celebrate you for her life we pray, oh God, that even all of the lives that she would have ministered to and touched throughout her life, God, Father, that there, oh God, will be able to testify, oh God, of all that you would have done to them through her. And I pray, oh God, that even 
all the fruits, oh God, will continue to come forth. Father, this evening, even as we invite you into this place, I pray, oh God, that you will just have your way in this service. And I pray, oh God, that even all the hearts and lives that are here, I pray, oh God, will be touched from all that will be said and done, oh God, even the word that shall come forth this evening. We pray, oh God, that it will be one that will be challenging, oh God, so that lives will be changed, hearts will be renewed, oh God. And Father, we will be transformed by the power of your word this evening. I pray, oh God, that you would bless everyone should, that shall even contribute to this service. And we thank you for your faithfulness once again. We thank you for your grace. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Thank you, Pastor Marshall. We'll now sing the hymn, Tis So Sweet to Trust in Jesus. Just to take him at his word, just to rest upon his promise, just to know the saith the Lord. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I prove him. Trust him more. Yeah, oh, how sweet to trust in Jesus, just to trust his cleansing blood, just in simple faith to plunge me beneath the healing, cleansing flood. From sin and self to cease, just from Jesus, simply taking life and rest and joy and peace. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust Him, how I proved Him more and more. Jesus, Jesus, pray. Trust Him more. Gonna trust Him more. Yes, I'm so glad I learned to trust Him. Precious Jesus, save your friend. And I know that He is with me. Will be. Oh, for 
will have the scripture reading by Mrs. Marguerite Sandiford, who is Esther's sister-in-law. And it will be 1 Corinthians 15, verses 51 to 58. Good evening to everyone. Listen, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will all be changed. In a flash, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, the dead will be raised imperishable, and we will be changed. For the perishable must clothe itself with the imperishable, and the mortal with immortality. When the perishable has been clothed with the imperishable, and the mortal with immortality, then the saying that is written will come true. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh death, is your victory? Where, O oh death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin. And the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God. Hallelujah. He gives the victory Amen. through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourself fully to the work of the Lord. Because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. Thanks be to God for his word. Amen. Those of you who knew Esther well, you would know that very often, wherever she would be, there would be a whole set of children very close by. And it was her life's work and passion to share the story and the gospel of Jesus with children. And the lives that she has touched have been countless. And we believe it's very appropriate, therefore, to have a tribute in song by a number of children today who are here. And so we'll ask the Thomas Gap and Agape children, Christian Ministries to come and to bear, give tribute. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Yes, uh, I am one of the children. <laughs> right. I feel like I've known Esther all my life. But um, actually, it's just about 20 years, just over 20 years that I would have met her and worked with her. Should I say work with her or work behind her? Because I couldn't keep it with Esther. <laughs> <laughs> Esther was so energetic, so excited about everything she did. So therefore, we have representing here a group from Agape House at Six Roads and from Thomas Gap. So we thought we would do a little acrostic to somehow, we would not be able to do it fully, but somehow be able to let us let you know how, how we feel about this woman of God. Never met anybody quite like Esther. I mean, she was everything that a Christian woman could be. Thank you. That's the word, complete. So we thought we would put together this little cross stick. So I have my grandson to come with the E in Esther. Shall I come? Um... And that E 
You can see that E there? All right. Um, energetic. Enthusiastic. And interesting enough, I don't know if Sandra is here from Station Hill, but maybe she's in. I don't know. I told them to, I was going to put them in the sun because we're going to come right across here. You know, Esther going to take up a lot, a lot of space right across there. So I was going to put them across the back. Oh, oh, okay, okay, okay. No problem. All right, so Esther, the energetic lady. And the last time she visited with us at Six Rose was just about six weeks ago, you know. And she put us to shame. You know, young people like me and some younger ones be there singing. And as this young lady would say, she didn't like 80. She didn't like 26. You know, I could still see her foot. No. You know, as she was enthusiastically, she got up and she danced enthusiastically. So the E is for energetic. The S, come S. The S, of course is we thanking God for the sandy fruits that, you know, Brother Stephen here. A lot of us may not know her as we know Stephen with Youth for Christ and so on, but we just thank God for the sandy fruits, Amen. right? Amen. And there, Steve, was the same thing, so enthusiastic, you know, that was, that was something in the, in the sandy fruits. So, we saw it in Esther. Yeah. Right? So I said, like I said, we saw um, San Sandra was the one some over 20 years ago that introduced me to Esther. Um, so I, I wouldn't want not to mention her name. But of course, in Esther was also, as you will know, Samuel. She just loves Samuel. When we ever we talk, it would be uh, pray for Samuel. She just loves this guy. He's right over here to my right. <laughs> so that S was her heart. Her heart is right over there. Samuel. Amen. So E energetic S Samuel. And of course, as you can see there. S was for six roads. This is one of the ministries that she would visit, like I said, up to about six weeks ago. She came and she gave. Like I said, this woman was a complete woman. She just gave and gave to us, you know, her life, her everything. So, in Esther was six roads. All right, so we have... All right. All right. We have the T here. And the T is for Thomas Gia in the city. All right. Um, now we have some representatives here also from Thomas Gia. And you want, she just want to say something quickly. I'm just going to try to wrap this up in five minutes. Less than, Less than five minutes. We have an hour in total. Okay. Come quickly, come quickly. Say, say something. She, this is one of the persons from Thomas Gap. No, no, don't wait, don't wait, don't wait. We don't have the time. Yeah? All right, we're going to ask why she's doing that then. E-S-T- H hospitals. You ready? All right. From Thomas Scott, go ahead. Esther, if I had to ask you who is your favorite person in the Bible and why, what will your answer be? I must say, this is easy. I like Esther. Reason I like Esther is because she's brave and she is smart and I'm all of that too. Just ask God. Amen. All right, and then we have 
um, H, H in Esther, whenever she visited with us, I had to take her to the district hospital to visit a, a little one there that God led her to that never walked. And she was into the hospitals. She was into the district hospitals, the Queen Elizabeth hospitals. So quickly now, it was E-S-T-H, another E. So it wasn't just Thomas Gap and the hospitals and Six Roads, Evang Evangelical, she visited. Let me hear some of the places quickly that, that she would have gone to, in the, especially in the city. Lightfoot Lane. Lightfoot Lane. New Orleans. New Orleans. Chapman Lane. Chapman Lane. She was an evangelist. She, she was just planning to go back to Guyana as well. Amen. All right. All right. So, and then the R. The R. Shut me down. See this? Four books. She was a reader. Sam would tell you he was afraid of her reading. You know, she would be at home every day. And just reading, reading, reading. He thought she was reading too much. You ever hear about reading too much? Well, she learned, she gave me these books. These are four, four of them. This is just four of them. The others, she took back some. You can take all. She, 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 she lent you some. And you had to bring back the others. So she was a reader. So I wish I had a, 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 a day to tell you about Esther, but because of time, again, let, let's, hear, let's hear it for Esther. E S. T H E R Esther. All right. Um, the, the songs we're going to sing on the grave site. All right. I, I won't take any more, more of your time. Thank you very much. Thank you, Pastor Walren and the children. We appreciate that. Um, of course, we, we do have to keep things rolling and we're on a bit of a tight schedule. So we'll ask. We'll ask Pastor Lorna Walcott to come and to share a short tribute. Good afternoon to everyone. Good afternoon. I feel so happy to be here to say something on behalf of our dear sister Esther. And I'm going to speak a bit about her when she was a member of Spitestone Christian Mission. Sister Esther was affectionately known as Auntie Esther. She was a devoted Christian lady who was approachable and would always greet you with a wide smile before a word was spoken. She was always interested in the spiritual welfare of everyone she met. Her face would light up when she realized that you were born again. She loved to rejoice in the God of her salvation. There was never a dull moment when she was around. In church, she'd be clapping, she'd be waving, jumping, prancing up and down the aisle and through the door to the front porch and back. There were times when she would be running on the spot or giving a complete body shake. In the midst of all this, she would be shouting, Hallelujah! You know, I want you to touch me. She would make a little stress on the loo. Yeah. Hallelujah. That was her way of saying hallelujah. And let me say, this came from the very depths of her heart. She brought much delight and admiration from our church members. I had a very good relationship with her, working in the Sunday school and the youth department. She was always ready and willing to take part in all church activities. Sometimes her sermons were lengthy, they were inspiring, we would leave late, but we were filled. During prayer meetings, she would pray last because she knew she had many things to put before the Lord. She was a prayer warrior. She prayed and fasted many times at home and in the church. And there are many times she would ask for the church keys to have a personal all-night prayer session. She prayed for many people she met while evangelizing, especially the youths. On arrival at church, she would kneel in prayer until the start of the service. She believed this was the best position to pray. On testimony nights, she shared many instances where God came through for her, her valley experiences and the mountain experiences. She was not faint-hearted. She told us of going into red light districts, evangelizing, 
and the tracks which she shared out were torn and thrown at her. She was told by some residents, some hostile residents, never to return. But y'all know Esther, mm -hmm. she did, mm -hmm. because she was after their souls. Mm -hmm. She was a strong advocate for faith healing. Her faith in God was seen during her pregnancy. She told me she had asked God for a son. And although her biological clock was ticking away, <laughs> she was adamant that she would bear a child. Despite challenges in her pregnancy, she caught this child will live. And we all know she gave birth and named her son Samuel. Our Bible club at Spike Stone was a brainchild of our dear Auntie Esther. We met, we read the word, sing songs and so on. And the children were all excited to these sessions, so much so that when it came to the close, to close the service, they were reluctant in leaving. She wrote the motto and the theme song for the club. To this day, we still have some club members who visit us and participate in church activities. She had a great passion for evangelism. And she would be seen many times with her bullhorn and an unlimited amount of Christian literature, which she would call tracts. She had a lot of, she did a lot of evangelizing in the Thomas Gap area. She asked permission from the MP in the area to debush a piece of land to erect a tent. Permission was given and she bought the tent and many teaching sessions and crusades were held there. She invited some of the adults and the youth to spike some on Sundays. She would go to Thomas Gap, collect the children and travel with them to the church. In church, Auntie Esther could be seen giving Bibles to even children who could not read. And her reason was a quote, we have to introduce them to the word of God when they are small. Auntie Esther was always full of life, vigor, and put a lot of effort and energy into the, into the things of God. She did everything she possibly could to please God and wanted others to do so. Earthly possessions were not captured to her. Her main focus was on the heavenlies. In concluding, Auntie Esther touched many lives, of whom there are men and women today. They even have their own children. She left a wonderful legacy behind for all of us. Auntie Esther, you have fought a good fight. You have kept the faith. You have finished your course. And we usually say, may she rest in peace. But I'm saying she is resting in peace. Thank you, Pastor Walken. And as we've already heard, Esther had a one and only, and her one and only is Samuel Duncan. And he is her son, and he's going to say a few words. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, thank you very much for coming. I am not a public speaker, and I was nothing like my mom. Um, there was a side to my mom that knew, no one knew that only I saw. A humble side. She was the most humble person that I knew. Um, I've talked so long about what I would say, but I would just say this. She would get up every morning before even the chickens up and she would be praying every single morning, every night. 
any opportunity that she had to fulfill her purpose, she would do it without blinking, without question, in full service to the Lord Jesus. And she was always so cheerful that even when I was upset, just one, a couple words, it would all go away. Her influence was so strong within the house, the neighborhood, the environment, everyone she came into contact with was touched. And it could not be the same after she had this book with all these phone numbers, hundreds, categories, this gap, this gap, these kids, these kids, you know, and even in her old age, like getting down, she would never forget what purpose she had. She used to say, I'm an intercessor. And she would have her books, she would have them piled up. She would be on her knees until she dropped sleep on her knees. You know? I said, Mom, it can't be for everybody. And she said, well, you know, my God hears and answers even the unsaid prayers that come from the heart. So she was able to still maneuver through her difficulties while putting her faith in God. And if there was one thing that I had, one, one goal that I had that I would like to maintain, and I would like nothing more than to at least be in some way like my mom. And I will, and I am really missing her. And I thank you all. Well, I don't know about the not public speaking. That sounded excellent to me. Well done, Sam. Well done. All right. We're going to sing the hymn. We're marching to Zion.
We'll now have the sermonette by Pastor Deborah Callender, who is, as most of you know, Esther's one of Esther's nieces. Good afternoon, everyone. I give honor to God the Father, God the Son, God the Blessed Holy Spirit for this opportunity where we can just focus a little bit on the Word of God as we reflect on the life of Esther Sandiford Duncan. If I had to give this a theme or a topic, it would be living and dying with purpose. And as my cousin Sam went through and he mentioned Aunt Esther living her life, fulfilling what she believed to be her purpose, I said, yes, Lord, I just want to thank you for even the evidence that you've really given this to me. And we want to focus on Philippians chapter 1, the second clause, the last clause of verse 20, and all of verse 21. I'll read it for you quickly. So now also Christ shall be magnified in my body, whether it be by life or by death. For to me, to live is Christ, and to die is gain. Father, we thank you for this, your word. It is forever settled, established in heaven. Not one jot, not one tittle of it shall move or pass away. And therefore, we ask, Holy Spirit, that you will do way beyond what my voice and my words can do, that some seed would be sown and planted deep down in the hearts of someone, that change would be effected in our lives. Mm -hmm. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. In today's society, I often notice the lack of purpose with which people go through life. They seem unsure of what to do with their lives. Yeah. There's some who can spend an entire lifetime just laying under the street light domino table not that anything is wrong with that but there has to be more to life than that Amen. there are those who just have seem to have just i'm going on whatever happened happened not much seems to move them and the reality is that god has granted us gifts and talents that we are supposed to use there is divine purpose attached to every life if you can hear my voice in this cemetery, I want to let you know you are in one of the richest places you could ever be. I say that often to the folks at Jackson. You know why? Because the gifts and talents that God has invested in human beings, in mankind, so many of us return to the earth without even beginning to fulfill that purpose. And the talents and the gifts, they rest in the cemetery with us. It's a rich place. Unfortunately, at this point in time, they cannot now begin to use those gifts. Actually, if they got up and started to use them, we would be out of here so fast. We would be running to Zion, not marching. <laughs> I'm saying that to live without fulfilling that purpose is to fail to make the best use of this gift called life. I'm a product of Esther Sandiford's ministry because we were in the house you didn't escape. So summer vacations we spent in Mount Stanfast. I have a special place for that, a special place in my heart for the parish of St. James. And it's so good to see some of the faces that I associate with my memories of childhood. And I'm saying to you that it was also a legacy. And let's watch what we pass on to our children. Because her mother before her might not have had the title child evangelist. But I could remember the heart of giving and love and sharing and help that was there. Mm -hmm. And whatever she had, which might not have been much, it was to be shared with the community. The breadfruit tree in the back. Come, Smith, you know the breadfruit tree, I mean. The breadfruit tree in the back. That breadfruit tree helped to feed many a person in Mount Stanford. Because when Miss Sandiford goes up with that bamboo stick and the knife in the top, and she reaches down some breadfruits, you know who got to carry them? Come here, girl. Carry this, down by v, carry this down by V. And V was short for Vera. And I know there's some of you here who would remember and know who Vera was. And when she passed up the road, Vi! And there was always something on the, something on the stove that could be shared. 
or somebody would bring a message and say somebody had a bad foot or something, she would be sending or carrying advice. She lived her life with purpose and she believed her purpose was to help all those whom she could. That was a tight, close-knit community and everybody helped everybody. Miss Francis next door. We used to pass down in between next to Sister Heather burn it and go long down on the bay when fish came up. And you learn to share and share alike. And I believe that uh, Esther believed that she had purpose attached to her life. So did Joseph Cornelius, so did Stephen Ezra. And they lived out their lives the way they believed God wanted them to live. But this message is not about them. This message about, is about the fact that Paul understood his purpose in life after his conversion and not even imprisonment could chill his passion for working for God. Hence the letters like the one I just read from in the Philippians. What are you passionate about? What are we passionate about? What drives us? Paul wanted to be glorified in his day-to-day. -day. Want, Paul wanted God, sorry, to be glorified in his day-to-day -day existence. So he committed his new life to doing what he believed God had called him to do, which was preaching the gospel, especially to the Gentiles, people who were not really counted as much under Judaism. But he did what he believed he had to do, even when it did not please others around him. And for those of you as Bible readers, you know the difference of opinion that developed between Paul and Peter. Yeah. We won't develop that now. I'm saying Aunt Esther committed her life to what she believed God had called her to do, which was child evangelism, preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ to children everywhere, regardless of who thought what. You heard in the tribute how she would go into certain districts, and even when the people tell you don't come back down here, she will still go. Because she believed that's what God wanted her to do. For both Paul and Aunt Esther, the focus was on carrying out their God-given purpose. Even to the exclusion of all else materially. To them, living meant Christ was the center of their lives. And it can be frustrating sometimes, even for your children. Many a time we have a family, I, I often remember and we tease my brother and my sister about it. We would have a little family beach day planned. And then somebody would call daddy to say, well, my mom is not well. She's going to the hospital and beach day gone through the edders. Because daddy will tell us, um, listen, we can go and do it another time. I have to go to the hospital. It was that kind of passion that drove them. It drove the apostle Paul. To them, dying meant seeing for themselves and being with the Christ on whom they focused in their lifetime. This evening, the questions are not for Aunt Esther. She got them answered long time ago. Mm -hmm. The questions are for us who remain. Are we living out our God-given purpose in this present life? Are we making preparation, adequate preparation, for living out an eternity with our Savior in the life to come? We know every year around June, they will tell you, well, all right, get ready, hurricane season. But you know, as we hear of a way of approaching, we still scrambling at the supermarket. We're still rushing. We still got long lines at the gas stations. I'm saying we can do better than this, seeing that God has told us what his plan is. And we need to live our lives in readiness. So my prayer is that today would begin a turning point in someone's life where we reassess our lives and choose to live our lives with purpose. God bless you. Could you bow your heads in prayer with me? Father God, I've given to your people what you've given to me. We don't need a lot of long speeches and long words to recognize that you've created us with talents and gifts and abilities and purpose for whom you did foreknow, you did predestinate. That's the word. And Father, today we say we are sorry if it is that we've been failing to live out our divine purpose and we commit ourselves afresh to doing so, to reassessing where we, what we are good at, what we can do well, and giving it back unto you, Lord. We understand we are going to have to give you an account of this life and the things we've done in it. And I believe as Aunt Esther, as she did, <laughs> I believe she's, she was at the position where she could say, well, look, you know what, I fought a good fight. I have finished my course. 
and I have kept the faith. She is at the hence fourth part of that ver those verses. She knows what is laid up for her. I pray that we would live our lives in readiness. That our lives and our deaths will have purpose and meaning. That you, Father, would be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Before we conclude this part of the service with a prayer from Pastor Louis Walren for the family, I would just like to mention and say thank you to a number of family members who um, are, some are here, some are overseas, but they have been supportive and we certainly appreciate that. They would include the Maynards, the Clarks, the Thomases, the Cummings, the Shufflers overseas, Aunt Nettie's children and grandchildren. Mm -hmm. And so we just want to say thank you to all of them. They're not here with us, um, or some are here with us, but not all can be here. But we're grateful for their love and their support these days. And we know that we're assured of their prayers as we go forward. So we'll conclude this portion of the service with a prayer for the family from Pastor Louis. Shalom. Every time Esther calls, Shalom, Shalom. That's my boy. I'm going to ask the two of them to come to represent the next generation, Amen. so to speak, Amen. as we pray. I want to pray for this generation, come, just come in front of us, we're going to rest and just your hands towards them at this time. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you. Thanking you, Lord God, for the life of Sister Sandiford. Thanking you, Lord God, for the legacy of the very Sandifords. They have really touched, reached out and touched others. And now, dear God, as Esther goes, your word tells us we sorrow not as those who have no hope. But, oh God, we do miss, miss we do wouldn't miss her. So we ask you, dear God, to be the comforter that you promised to be to the Sandiford family. We thank you for them and all that they have contributed to the kingdom. So we ask you to bless them, strengthen them. Oh God, even in these latter years, Stephen and dear God, we pray you would continue to strengthen these families, comfort them. But oh God, more than anything else, the baton is passed to these younger ones. Lord, we pray for them. We pray for them, oh God, as it's passed on. Living in a different generation, a, a generation of crime and violence and same sex. And, oh God, it goes on. So we pray for them, oh God. Amen. Ah, that you would strengthen them in the name of Jesus. As it's passed on, oh God, your grace is sufficient. So, so for the families, oh God, so this family, oh God, as it is passed on, oh God, we just ask you. Not by might, not by power, oh, but by your spirit, in the name of Jesus. Just bless, 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 Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Thank you very much, Pastor. At this time, we're going to prepare ourselves for the committal. So I'm just going to ask the Paul Bearers to come at this time.
Come on, Corbin. Come on, Corbin. No problem. Ready? Mm -hmm. Man that is born of a woman hath but a short time to live, and is full of misery. He cometh up and is cut down like a flower. He fleeth as it were a shadow, and never can one stay. In the midst of life we are in death. Of whom may we seek for succor? But of thee, O Lord who for our sins are justly displeased. Yet, O Lord God most holy, O holy, most mighty, O holy and most merciful Savior, deliver us not into the bitter pains of eternal death. Thou knowest, Lord, the secrets of our hearts. Shut not thy merciful ears to our prayer, but spare us, Lord most holy, O God most mighty, O holy and merciful Savior, thou most worthy eternal judge, suffer us not at our last hour for any pains of death to fall up from thee. For as much as it has pleased Almighty God of his great mercy to take unto himself the soul of our dear sister here departed, we therefore commit her body to the ground. Earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. In sure and certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life, through our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall change our vile body, that it might be like unto his glorious body, according to his mighty working, Hereby he is able to subdue all things to himself. I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Write, from henceforth, blessed are the dead which die in the Lord. Even so, saith the Spirit, for they rest from their labors. Let us pray. O oh God, our Father, be near unto us now to sustain and comfort us. Give us that sense of thy love for thy children, whereby we may know that neither death nor light, life, nor things present nor things to come can separate us from thee, and that we live forever with the Lord. As we live in thy keeping, the life thou didst give, and has taken away. Remove from us all doubt and fear and give us courage and hope by which we may be able to bear manfully the burdens of our daily tasks until at length we too by death attain to life everlasting. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. Let's all say the Lord's prayer together. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
At this time, we will sing the first hymn, Sing the Wondrous Love of Jesus. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus, sing his mercy and his grace. In the mansions bright and blessed, he'll prepare for us a place. When we all, when we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we We'll sing and shout the victory While we walk the pilgrim pathway Clouds will overspread the sky But when traveling days are over Not a shadow, not a sigh When we all, when we all get to heaven What a day of rejoicing that will be We'll sing and shout the victory Let us then be true and faithful Trusting, serving every day Just one glimpse of Him in glory Will the toil of life repay When we all, when we all get to heaven What a day of rejoicing that will be Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. Onward to the prize before us, soon his beauty we'll behold. Soon the pearly gates will open, we shall tread the streets of gold. When we all, when we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be when we all when we all see Jesus we'll sing and shout the victory Amen these are some of the songs that Aunt Esther truly love um, and we know for sure that her life has indeed been a tremendous Tremendous blessing to many. The next hymn will be as a journey through the land. As I journey through the land, singing as I go. Street. 
Amen. Could the church say hallelujah? Come on, could the church say hallelujah? I am sure this is what Aunt Esther would have wanted. I can almost see her at the Welch's church just running up and down, giving the Lord praise and thanks. And I'm sure she's looking down from the heights of glory, just smiling on in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God, born of His Spirit. In his blood, this is my story. This is my song, raising my savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song. And this is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. The final hymn, To God Be the Glory.
At this time, we're going to be allowing you to lay the flowers on the grave. At this time, we want to invite the Assistant General Superintendent of the Christian Mission, Elder Lennox Wiggins, to offer the condolences at this time. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Great things he has done. Give an honor to God, our Heavenly Father, His Son, Christ Jesus, and to the blessed Holy Spirit. As a man or woman lives, so shall he die. Our sister Esther lived as an evangelist. She lived as a missionary. She lived as a prayer warrior. And I want to thank God this evening because we are a part of a revival service. And if you believe it, just put your hands together for God. A revival service. Hallelujah. Recognizing the life and the legacy of a great woman of God. It gives me great pleasure at this time on behalf of the Christian Mission Inc., the Board of Management, and the General Superintendent to pass on sincere condolences to you, the sovereign relative of our beloved sister, and to assure you that God is with you and he will continue to be with you. We also want to pass on tribute on the behalf of our Reverend Marcus Hines from the St. Lucie Division, who also asks that greetings or condolences be passed on. And even as we should move from here, be assured that the God of Jacob, he is still our refuge and he will continue to support us. Be thou faithful until death. God bless you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much, Elder Wiggins, for um, giving us the condolences at this time. I, too, on, want to say on behalf of my wife, the Reverend Rufan Wiggins, who could not be here, and my family to really extend condolences on their behalf also. And we are going to continue to pray for the family that God will sustain them at this time. I also want to say on behalf of the family, um, a special thank you to everyone that would have made it possible to be here. Your presence here is truly appreciated. Um, our sister Esther, she was a tremendous influence to the life of many people. And we want to thank you for your support today. And we pray that the Lord will continue to bless you in Jesus' name. At this time, you will have the benediction. The grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all and forevermore. And all of God's wonderful people say, Amen. Amen. Okay, as we depart at this time, um, the
group here from um, Agape, Agape House, etc. We'll be doing a tribute as we are dismissing as we go. Amen. All right? You are free to go. All right, there, Mark. This is handy. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. All right, as we go, we're going to sing those two courses that I know if you are over 40, you know them. No grave can hold my body down, and I'll be caught up to meet him. How about it? Esther style, please. No grave can hold my body down. No grave.
Say it to 